I can hear you, Tom Waddington. It's a corporate logo transistor. It's a corporate logo transistor. It's art. Oh, cards, yeah. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Backstage on Q, day three or the morning after the night before. <laughs> did everyone find State Street last night? I can tell some did. I can tell a few more did as well, and we'll see them later today. <laughs> not our first show. So good morning. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, am I coming through all, all right? Can, can you hear me OK? OK, very good. And if we're here, put your hand up. If you're not here, where are they? State Street still? Probably. Oh, okay. Doing, doing cleanup. <laughs> yeah. Doing cleanup. Okay. Well, good morning. It's good to see you all. Did everyone have good sessions yesterday? Did you get good stuff out of most of the sessions yesterday? Yeah. Tell me which, which was the best session. <laughs> Somebody gets a t-shirt. <laughs> okay. The second notice is there's no swag at this one. Unlike David Fox, we don't do swag. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> so I would like to, if it's okay with you, I'd like to introduce John Hessler. John Hessler has been with ETC 20 years, and he and I met early in his uh, career here at ETC. We spent a month together one week at the Trenton War Memorial in Trenton, New Jersey. It was a horror show, but we got to spend that horror show together. Yeah. <laughs> uh, John worked in uh, uh, tech support. He worked in phone support. He worked in field service, which was his real love. And he has moved up the ladder. He went to project management, and now he is manager of special technical projects, which means we work together on stuff that we can't tell you about. <laughs> it's really kind of cool. It's really kind of cool. Don't tease me. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, this, this is going to be a long way, morning for you. <laughs> whoever said that, that's great. We're really hoping this will be an interactive and kind of fun program today. Don't hold back. Don't throw stuff, but don't, don't hold back. So it's my great pleasure to be teaching with Steve. And I know most of you met him yesterday. But I feel that someone like Steve always needs some additional introduction. And as Steve said, we met very early in my career, but well into his roughly 497-year <laughs> career in electronic field service. Um, I know I read on the internet once that he's the guy who explained to Ben Franklin at the bar how electricity works. <laughs> he won't admit to it because it's Philly. So um, I but, merely suggested the key. I, but, I always suggested was the key. And you know. Um, so as Steve says, I got to meet him early in my time in field service when I was a very young technician, uh, because Steve started doing this when I was in second grade. Um, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I got to go. 
And uh, I was tasked with teaching some people and I found an incredibly blunt, challenging personality of the best kind because it has always been a joy when I've gotten to work with Steve. He is genuinely one of the best in the industry and he has forgotten more about service than I will ever know. So, Steve Short, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Just to go back, I had fun yesterday with you guys. That was, it was some fun classes. The, the last class, I think we were all doing this, but it was okay, it was okay. They, they, were, they were all fun and I, I enjoyed it. So thank you, thank you for letting me do that yesterday. So why are we here this morning? <laughs> what? <laughs> what, what, what? So we're gonna talk about <laughs> troubleshooting. The ability to see, fix, find problems, maybe upcoming problems if we're all very lucky, that we can circumvent before we get there. Um, and then following what the issue is, the logical conclusion or resolution. Uh, we, we will talk about what do you mean broken? <laughs> tomato, tomato. Um, because it's kind of important to know what we're talking about. You know, what is working, what is not. And then try and talk about methodology. What are some of the general approaches to troubleshooting? So what is the unexpected result? What is the expected result? What is the history? What has changed? Was there a storm last night? Did someone touch it? <laughs> From Steve, when there's a puddle on the floor of your house, do you look up or do you look for the dog? What's the background? Uh, when the flashlight doesn't work, do you replace the batteries or do you look for a drop of clear nail polish on one of the buttons? So once... Ah. <laughs> There's a story. There's a story. There's gonna be a couple of stories today. One or two. Actually, so. so once upon a time in the annals of technical services, back in the old days before HR had control, as part of the interview for tech service, people would come in and they'd be presented with two mag lights. One worked, one didn't. The trick was to make the one that didn't work, work. And all you had to do was troubleshoot a mag light. And I've never seen so many technicians brought to the point of rage and frustration <laughs> over a stinking mag light. And so, you know, not to kill the punchline, but we just did it. Nail polish is an amazing and funny thing. <laughs> Strategically applied. So, but how do you work through that? How do you get through that? So, Mr. Short. Should we bring up Mike Wilson? Is this oh, yeah. an appropriate yeah. time for Mike Wilson? Yep. Mike Wilson was a field service employee of ETC for many years and a legend a legend in tech service. I learned a lot from Mike Wilson. And he was very clear on how to take a problem and get it into a box so you can begin to figure out how do you address this, how do you manage this. And one of the key things he said to me was, relax, take a deep breath, go take a pee. If you smoke, go smoke. Go at it with calm. Get yourself centered. I'm not a particularly Zen guy, but yeah, get yourself centered. Get yourself into the zone of, okay, I can now look at this in a reasonable expectation of finding the solution to it. And we're actually gonna do, is now the time for the uh, yeah. conversation? Yeah. We're actually gonna have a little phone conversation and I am gonna be the end user and I'm gonna be fraught, fraught. I'm gonna be tech support. That's right. <laughs> hello, 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 you gotta help me. My system's going kerflooey, and I got a show in two hours. Good afternoon, sorry to hear about the issue. Can you tell me more about your system and what is happening? I, I, I don't know, I came in, I can't get any lights turned on. What am I gonna do? Whoa, is me, what am I gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> can, can, can you tell me what job this is? Is there a... No, 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 I can't answer any questions, but you gotta get the lights on. <laughs> okay, C 
Can you tell me about the system? Describe the various parts. Where is the dimmer rack? D dimmer, dimmer rack? The button on the wall doesn't turn on lights. You gotta help! Uh, hello? Uh, hello? Uh, uh, uh. Uh. Hello? Hello? I lost a call. I gotta replace this 1996 cell phone. <laughs> Do you know what the charge for cell phones these days? My monthly charge is outrageous. Do you know that? I, I, I actually do know what they charge, but can we focus on your lights? Okay, can, okay. Can, can I'll you try. tell me something about where you are in your lighting all right. system? Okay, all right. Hey, you kids, get off the stage. This isn't a playground, for God's sakes. Get out of here. Damn kids. Now, what were you saying? No, wait a minute. Uh, no, wait a minute. That was the class bell. I got to go. I'm teaching technology today. I'll call you back. Okay, we'll be waiting for. Hello? Uh, hello? Okay, okay, I'm back. It's okay now, but I gotta go in a couple of minutes. I gotta go pick up my wife from her electroshock treatments. <laughs> what could maybe have gone better in that call? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're, we're being silly. But the, there's, a, there's a message in here. And I think I spoke, I tried to speak to all three groups yesterday saying, when you have this conversation with tech service, be prepared, be ready. They want to help you. But if you tie their hands or if you're working on a wonky cell phone or you don't have data up to the dimmer rack or whatever the curse is, fix it before you have that conversation. So you can go in centered, relaxed, ready to work with them to help you fix the problem. Define the problem as best you can. Give them the job number. Give, if they don't have the job number, give them the job name. Hopefully they can pull up the system drawings and configurations. So that you guys have the best shot of getting the most out of tech service on the phone. Exactly. Or even through your insanity of the day. Because starting with panic always leads to a very long day. And it just doesn't get through it. So where do you begin? Where do you begin troubleshooting an issue? Nope, 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 nope. You watch your presenter. I'll go get my wife. I'll be back. <laughs> no, no, we do this part first. Oh. Um, where do you begin? Before anything, what's the first thing you get out when you're troubleshooting? A notepad, something to write on, your phone. Notepad. I always carry a little notepad in my go bag so that I have something to write down. So you start by documenting. What do you think should be happening? What is happening or what is not happening? One of our favorite phone calls is the lights are blinking. What do you mean blinking? Should they be blinking? <laughs> but some states, yes. It, it, um, it's a feature. So, but. <laughs> What observations can you make about the system initially? Do you see, and we will go into much more detail on UIs and specifics and like lighting product later in the day, but that's not this class. Um, what error beacons are blinking? What things do you see? Do you have lights that indicate something? Do you have messages that indicate something? Keep a running tab of all of that because by the time you get to phone support, it's really helpful to have a list of what you've done, or when you call support for your f phone router, which keeps coming and going, even when I'm doing that, I have a list of things. Yes, I have done that. Yes, I have done a soft reboot. Yes, I have done a hard reboot. Yes, I've gone through, cleared all the IPs out, because that's the first thing that usually goes on my router. Um, one of the techs called it an IP-hating mode. It was a very fun call. <laughs> um, of course, that was the fourth person I had talked to that day. But write it down. What do you see? Mike, if I could interrupt just for a second. So I used to, be, I'm old school, so I wrote down everything. And I have a 26-year-old young man working for me, and he says, you have a phone, right? <laughs> so the answer is, so blinking beacons or messages in the, in the LCD windows, take a picture of it. Because you can send that to the guy on the other end of the phone, guy or gal on the other end of that phone, and that will give them a snapshot of what you're seeing. Because we need to see what you're seeing to help you. So a snapshot is wonderful. 
wonderful. And, and you can email it off or text it or however, however you want to send it off and get into the hands of somebody who can make sense of it. It's not just hieroglyphics. It, it means something. So um, when did it start? Someone, I was sitting with, with one of our phone techs at breakfast this morning, and he related, we're getting into the most wonderful time of year when everyone comes back to school. And we get, every year, we get at least one school. Well, the system was down at the end of the school year, but we have a show now <laughs> in two days. So can you get it fixed? So how long? Do you, what is the history of it? Most importantly, how many things do you change at a time? One. One. One thing at a time. Because if you go in and change five things, what fixed it? <laughs> if you go back and revert those five things and then it still works, what happened? <laughs> One thing at a time. And even, even when it is grim and dire and, and everything is horrid, you try and stay disciplined to one thing at a time. Um, there are emergency situations. That's why we have a test switch on all of the control modules. <laughs> and then we can sort it out afterwards. Um, and as I like to point out to my daughters, when you go into a theater, so what do you do? You look for the egress out because I'm always worried about getting out and getting my kids out. But I also said, you want to be the calmest person in the room. So when everyone is spinning around and producers are yelling and management from NBC is breathing over your shoulder and talent is on the deck and 14 different unions are waiting for you, let's take a look at the problem. Little steps. Having 14 stagehands helping me fix a problem in New York <laughs> gives me nightmares. As good and warm and gracious as these people are, Everybody just step back, step back. And while you're working, don't assume. Test, verify, document. Don't assume what the state is because much like the microphones this morning, for those few of you who saw it, you actually do have to turn those on too. <laughs> Sorry. Funny things. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of warm-up exercises. So the goal of these, we're going to put a picture up. What went wrong? How do you fix it? And how maybe could we not have gotten there? Does this make sense to everyone? Yes. All right, so our first example. <laughs> what went wrong? <laughs> Specifically. There's an overload. Unbalanced load. That was good. Who said that? Unbalanced that load. Maybe went a little too far. Yeah. Maybe the truck pulled away at an inopportune moment. <laughs> this is where the history of sequence, it matters a lot. OK, so what are some ways we could fix that? Well, how do we fix this now? <laughs> <laughs> Call EOD. Call the EOD. <laughs> So remove the imbalance once you know it's safe. Maybe get a crane, lift it up. How could, you ha how could this not have happened? Better balance. More than one set of eyes. Mm. More than one set of eyes. Curb edge. Curb edge. Bigger forklift. Uh, <laughs> never assume. <laughs> That's right. Training. Training. <laughs> not, not letting people loose on State Street was the comment. So, OK. So. No. <laughs> no, they barely trust us with rigging. All right, next one. You warmed up? This one's a little harder. <laughs> So we have an early entry, never order over the phone. Write it down. Spell what you mean. 
it's, it's kind of an old school technology, but if you can't go into the cake shop, what could you do? Send them a picture. Send a picture. Send a picture. Send a picture. Fax, email, depending on the shop. Um, how do you fix that? <laughs> no, you post it and laugh about it for the next 30 years. <laughs> KCorrects.com, one of my favorite sites. So, all right, our final one is this part of the class. I'm going to let Steve run this one. Mm -hmm. This is a phone call you don't want to get from one of your teams. <laughs> And what do we learn from this? Don't. <laughs> Perfect. There it is. Don't park next to a dumpster. Oh, boy. <laughs> Steve, you're not going to believe what happened. Send me a picture. <laughs> I didn't believe. <laughs> wow. And how do you fix that, Steve? <laughs> um, they actually came, uh, the police came, because it was municipal. And so the police came, and the carding company came, and a lot of people standing around stroking their beards going, hmm, hmm, you know there's a no parking sign there. <laughs> I said, how about we all just go away and just call this done? And the carding guy lifted it off the car, and the only thing damaged, interestingly enough, was a little bit of the door pillar and the, and the rear view mirror. Yeah, I was surprised. I, I thought they were going to come home with no glass in that car. So, but yep. There. Don't laugh, it still hurts. <laughs> I paid for that car. <laughs> well, well, no more cars for the employees. They have to walk. <laughs> so troubleshooting, not just for lights. <laughs> so when I was a growing technician, my troubleshooting technique was non-existent and we would start everywhere and I had no real path and it took me years and years and years to sort of figure out how I troubleshoot and how you move forward and you're going to hear an enormous amount of advice today on how to troubleshoot. This is the best. Um, <laughs> but as you go through, the important thing is to find a technique that works for you. Find your own path. I'm, I'm huge about split it down the middle, but first you have to understand the whole system, and one of the other classes will go into that. Um, but find a path. So as I have one example here. This was found by Turk Wilson, who I think many of you met yesterday. Uh, he's part of, the, part of the team, my team. He's great fun. He's wonderful. Uh, he's also one of the best troubleshooters I know because you ask Turk to fix something, and the first question isn't what is it. It's what's wrong, and how do we approach that? So I'm going to present something that he found that I'm wholeheartedly stealing from him because it's very good. This is a possible approach to troubleshooting. This was developed in, uh, by an Air Force colonel in the Korean War because the US was not doing so well at dogfighting. And he wanted to find a way to up our game. And it's the military, so of course it's an acronym, but that fits well with ETC. Um, what was that? ETC's the military, is what you're saying. No. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. I mean, my boss may be all Navy, but I mean, it's sort of military light. Anyway. Oh, are you still there, Meskel? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, he developed what he called the OODA loop. Of course, Patrick's going to come beat me now. Um, <laughs> protect me. Um, and the whole point is to find a, a system of troubleshooting. And so the OODA loop is an acronym for first, observe. See the problem. What do you know about what is going on? So for him, it was, we're getting shot down too much. It may be. Every time I come in Tuesday after a dark Monday, the lights flicker for half an hour. What is the issue? So see it, document it, find out as much as you can about it, and have the ground of where you want to go from. Then orient. So now you take the information you looked at, 
and you break it down. Say, okay, what's relevant and what's not relevant? For him, does it matter that it was a sunny day or a cloudy day? For us, does it matter if it was a sunny day or a rainy day? Because we have a lot of venues where that does. What information of the entire picture is, is valid and relevant to what you are working on? So you go through, you sift all that out, and then you decide, what am I going to do? What is the one thing that I am going to change on this pass? So for him, maybe it was come in higher. See if that works, because they had a height advantage on the opponent. Is it, I'm going to get a humidity sensor in the dimmer room, because it does weird things on the weekend, and we know the air conditioning's going off. What are you going to do, and then act? Execute your plan. So take that one thing and put it into motion. Then from there, and this is why it's called a loop, you start over again. You observe. Did it fix the problem? Yes, no. I'm doing a little itty bitty gig with the light stand and a console in the back of the room and the lights aren't coming on. I observe that the DMX is unplugged. I plug it in. Do the lights come on now? No. Now I'm going to observe that I haven't turned the console on yet. Because <laughs> it's like a you know, smart fade and you can just do stuff. I'm going to turn that on. Does that fix it? And the idea of the OODA loop is it is a continuous upward spiral to the point where it works. And you just keep going through that loop until you fix it. Always observing, always orienting being thoughtful about your approach, and then trying one thing at a time as you go. So any questions on that? Well, you guys were awake a couple of minutes ago. What happened? <laughs> eh, you let me talk too long. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. So one of, the, one of the things that happens to me a lot, I sit in phone support or near phone support, and a lot of the texts will come by. And sometimes they'll come by with their hair on fire saying, do you know how to fix something? Fill in the name of the product. Do you know how to deal with a color tran rack? I'm like, no. But I know how to troubleshoot. It doesn't necessarily matter what it is. So not knowing what the gear is is fine. Knowing how it interconnects, really the starting point of everything. So what is connected to what? So there is an apocryphal tale. Apocryphal meaning that after four hours on Google, I still can't find a record of it. So, but I was told by one of the former field service managers, so I know it's true, because Bill Wolf never lied. <laughs> May have exaggerated a little. Um, the story is of Sears phone support in the 50s. So in the 50s, America, expanding consumer society, lots and lots of people were buying TVs. And that was back in the old days of straight blade plugs, same size. And America's power grid had recently started bumping from 110 to 120. And they would get all of these phone calls from very angry middle America dads whose TV weren't working. And so as the story goes, they started with, well, is it plugged in? Well, of course it's plugged in. I'm not an idiot. And they eventually changed the approach to we know America is changing its power infrastructure. And this can affect you in some interesting ways. Because sometimes your house is wired backwards. So what you need to do is pull the plug out, flip it over, and plug it back in. And we bet that'll solve your problem. And as the fabulous tale goes, that solved about 80% of the, of the calls. They never called back. Why did they never call back? Because it Thank wasn't you. plugged in. Thank you. What is so effective about that approach? It doesn't put the blame on people. It doesn't make them feel stupid because people have egos. I mean, we're going to say it a few times today. Leave that at the door, though, please. Um, I'm going to qualify that. And don't be embarrassed. Yeah. Don't be embarrassed talking to your peers. Don't be embarrassed talking to tech service. Go, oops, it happens. I mean, between us, the, <laughs> our, our 
F-ups are legend. <laughs> legend. I was going to say. And sometimes you, you just say, oops, <laughs> oops, and then you make the best of it. And you make the best of it. And so we'll be doing a palm card later for you, which is some troubleshooting tips and tricks and things to look at. And the one side of the card says, don't panic. That was my addition to the card. And then on the back was a whole series of other things. And one of them is, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. It happens. It happens. And don't be embarrassed because ETC is like, you fixed it? Great, I'm taking the next call. <laughs> Yeah, we don't we don't keep score. No, we really no, don't. Absolutely not. So, and and in field service, when I was in field service long ago, when the well, I guess the dinosaurs had sort of cooled. <laughs> um, we would say that you weren't a field tech until you until you had well and truly smoked a significant chunk of a system. So, <laughs> um, you know, there's uh, there are many great stories through the years, but and you know, you got to call, you got to get it fixed. It is what it is. If, if I might, could I inject a short story? Yes. One of my first jobs a million years ago when I was 24 and I thought I was hot spit, I went out to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base to turn on a new system on old fixtures. This was at the Horizontal Impulse Laboratory where they shoot people, pets, uh, small, other small animals <laughs> down a track and they film it. And they film it a gazillion frames a second back when they were filming. And so they needed a ton of light. This, so this tube, a quarter mile long tube, had a gazillion PAR 64 fixtures, a million of them. And so you have, okay, I'm going to bring them up. And you can hear the whole building go as all these fixtures turn on, all these cold fixtures turn on. And so I do the system and I think, oh, I'm not a guy who got this, right? And I'm letting it bake in because I always let new systems bake in so problems can show up and I can fix it before I go on the airplane and leave. About 10 minutes later, the owner comes to me and goes, um, can we turn the system off? I was like, what, what? Well, when they do these horizontal impulse shoots, the fixtures are only on for about 10 or 15 seconds, and then they turn them off. So the fixtures are all essentially brand new, because none of the oils or paints have been baked off yet, and they're covered in dust, and now I've got them on for 15 minutes, and the smoke is rising in there. He's going, can we turn that off? I'm going, yeah, <laughs> let's turn that off. So that was, that was self-inflicted, but one of those ones where you have, there was instant feedback <laughs> and, and a reminder that you have to look at the big picture and be aware and mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> listen to the client. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yep. Hardest, hardest lesson to teach the freshman was to pull the plastic bag off of the lamps <laughs> and instead put them on. <laughs> yeah, we had trouble with that for a long time. <laughs> So, okay, so we're going to walk through an example. As we said, this really isn't, this is more about thinking about troubleshooting. So we're going to go, we know that everybody knows two things on this planet. Everybody knows their name and they know audio. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to do an audio example. So let's say you have your phone, you have a portable speaker, and you have a cable. It's not working. Where do you start? Is the cable plugged in? Is your phone turned on? Is, your phone turned on? Is the speaker turned on? Okay, good. We've covered those. So we're, we've made four loops with the O to loop. Yes. Right? That's the loop in practice. Is your volume up? Fifth loop. Are you actually playing music? Because some of the apps I use are sometimes ambiguous. So, or what's, a, what's another one with contemporary phones? What was that? Is it attached to another Bluetooth Not Bluetooth, we're just on cable. Is it playing through a different thing though? Yes, is another app playing on that that is being quiet? Do you have that jack enabled? Volume up. Is it compatible? That's a good one. Does the speaker need power? You've turned it on, but does it actually have power? 
Is there an indicator? Is the indicator blinking? Is the blinking indi indicator telling you that I'm about to die? <laughs> and therefore, I'm not going to output anything resembling audio. Yeah, that was two days ago. I don't know if everyone heard that. <laughs> but the question was, does the room have power? And particularly here at the Terrace this weekend, that is hilarious, um, to say the least. But it is, I wouldn't say rare, but it happens from time to time where people will call and say, nothing's working. I need help getting the lighting system up. And somewhere in the conversation, they say, hold on, I can't see anything in the dimmer room because we lost power to the building. <laughs> there you go. There it is. The palm to the forehead. Full face That's palm. That's exactly right. It's exactly right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And as tech service, he can't let them hear the clap of the, <laughs> of the palm to the forehead. Yeah. I, I say it often. I say it. <laughs> frequently with love, I would not make a good phone tech because I don't have a good poker presence. <laughs> I, I, I am sometimes a little too expressive, I have been told. OK, so that was a simple one. So now let's say we're doing a setup in an atrium. It's one of those little pop-up speeches that everyone loves. And we've got a mic a cable, and a speaker. We have no sound. Where do you begin? Do you have an amplifier? It's a self-powered speaker. Excellent question. Does the speaker have power, however? Does the microphone use phantom power? Oh. Are you in the right input? Do you have, does the microphone have phantom power? That's an evil one because those powered speakers don't have a phantom signal. Is there, <laughs> as we say, and I hope you hear many times today because it is one of my favorite phrases of all time ever in the history, a high impedance air gap? <laughs> because it's really hard for the little electrons to make that huge leap across the gap of when the cable is sitting right next to it. Um, so is it plugged in? At both ends. And how is it plugged in at both ends? I had a high school. I, I worked for a dealer for a year before I came to ETC. It's a little high school in northern Wisconsin. <laughs> and I was going to the other side of Wisconsin that day. And I had been up, and we were missing a cable. It had just not gotten shipped. That was back in the days of Arfu and Link. They were the same exact cable. So I showed the end user, when this comes in, all you need to do is plug into where it says ETC Link on the console and ETC Link on the wall. They're labeled the same. It's the same connector. You can't make it wrong. It's a mail-mail cable, too. It's a mail-mail cable. That's right. Just, you can't get it backwards. It's not possible. <laughs> And so he called in a panic the evening prior. He's like, it's not working, and we really need it because we really need to see what the dimmers are doing because the dimmer room is overheating. So we need to see if we're getting errors, and if that's why the lights are going out. I'm like, OK. I'm like, did you get the cable in the mail? Yeah. Did you plug it in? Absolutely. I'm like, OK, because I remember stories. What I want you to do is I want you to take the cable from the RFU and unplug it and move it over to the link, and then take that cable and plug it into the RFU. So you just swap the cables and make sure they're both plugged in. Do one cable at a time. You got it. He calls me back 15 minutes later. Doesn't work. I need you to come up here. So I'm like, sure, it's only four hours out of the way. We'll do that. So I get up extra early. I drive up to a little town north of Appleton, and I get there. And I get to the booth, and I look at the back of the console, and there's only one cable. And I say, hey, when I had you switch the cables around, did you move one of those? He's like, oh, it's in my office. And let me get it for you. And so he runs to his office and brings me the fresh from the factory zip-tied cable. 
So I took out my snips and went snip, 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 plugged it in. We went to deck. We checked everything. We were good. I'm like, is there anything else you need today? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to drive to the other side of the state. So how is it plugged in? All right, one more. You have a mic, you have a cable, you have an amp, you have a speaker, you have a mixer. There's no audio. Now what? Start from the mic and work your way across. Pick an end. You know, you, do you know all of the pieces in the system that are going to be part of generating sound from point A to point B? Can you see them all in your head? Because I know everybody in here knows audio. <laughs> and yes, you all know what those knobs do. We know. Um, can you see the whole system? So do you start at one end and work across? Do you start in the middle and work out? You know, do you start, what could, what could be wrong at the mixer? Setting wrong. No. Muted. Muted. Fader. Setting wrong, fader down. Not assigned. In the case of digital mixers, that's ever so much fun. Something, yes. Over aggressive gate. Um, do you know how to use the mixer? So I, I got to be around for the opening concert for a facility in the Midwest several years ago. I made the mistake of telling my regional I was driving through a town. She said, oh, can you just swing by for a minute? <laughs> and then after being there for 10 days, we got to see the opening concert. And I have this great picture of seven people around their brand new all digital mixer. Trying to get the mics turned on so they can mix a jazz concert. <laughs> I hit close to home, apparently. <laughs> So, um, in the end, they managed to get everything working a, not more than 15 minutes after curtain. It was, it was great. So, so, is troubleshooting a lighting thing? No. Troubleshooting is an everyday thing. There are infinite examples in your life. So, I've talked enough. So, <laughs> so this is the pitch for the following classes today. I'm, you're all <clears throat> on the track to go to these classes. Chris Glade and I are going to talk <coughs> excuse me, in more detail about troubleshooting ETC lighting equipment. And so you'll have an opportunity to get a little bit more hands-on in that. And, but here we're going to talk with kind of broad brushes about the ETC equipment. So we've gone from the, the audio world and making it work to something we're probably a little bit more comfortable with demo racks and consoles and so forth. Um, so do come to the class. Don't skip out to watch the waves out here on the lake or the pretty girls water skiing. Come, come to the class. Um, so it's, it comes back to the basics. It's always the basics. It's, it's always a good place to start. So I, I have a list here. It says, if you have a problem with the system, is it power? Do the racks have power? Does the console have power? Does the Ethernet switch have power, or did the UPS die three days ago? Does it have power? Signal. Is signal going to make its way? There's no yawning here. This is riveting. <laughs> <laughs> is the signal making its way from the console or your control device or your wall station? Is it making its way through the system to get to the lights? Is it doing, if, if it's not doing what you want, Where's the failure? Do we have an air gap? Or do you go out in the hallway and when the button in the back of the hall doesn't work, and you go out in the hallway and there's a plumber out there cutting a hole in the wall, and you're going, uh-oh, <laughs> uh-oh, this can't be good. This can't be good. Uh, so it's power. Um, Eric Vike the other day, who went to the Eric Vike one or for RDM? Eric did a great job on that, and he, I think he used the word tipping point. And tipping point, I, I have it as a different way, split the system in half. Split the system in half. So I've got control. Remember we said this? My ETC drawing, control, client action start here, results happen here. Think of the, of, think of the, um, of the riser diagram we looked at yesterday. So the control is up here. So I'm going to split this in half. I'm going to look for signal. If we, if we think it's a signal problem, I'm going to look for signal in the middle of the system. 
Am I getting expected results in the middle of the system? Am I at the switch? I can look there and say, oh, okay, I got the signal here. So it's between the switch and the dimmer rack or the, or the, or the relay rack or, or the DMX nodes. I'm looking for signal and it's continuity path out to the end result. Keep that, keep that riser in your head. Your actions, reactions. This is the path we want to follow. We want to look for, what was your term? Air gap? High, high, high impedance. impedance air gap. High, high yes. impedance air gap, exactly. We talked about the plumber out in the hall cutting a hole for a new uh, waistline. Whoops. He forgot to tell you that they ran all the control cable free air in the wall pockets here, and he cut right through the cable. Whoops. And if he did it really bad, he shorted it, so everything on that cable line, not just this room, everything else doesn't work, too. Whoops. Never happens. Never happens. Uh, so th that would be changes. Are we talking about tools today, the various test tools? You guys have some test tools in there. We, we do. In yours, don't you? We, we, yeah. we absolutely do. Yeah. We absolutely do. So. Um, and then, then we're going to get to resources. So you've come to a brick wall. There's not a plumber outside cutting a hole in the wall. You've got the power. You've got the data. What? What is next? We talked about this in, in the class yesterday uh, of uh, what I did with Kat and Jess. And what was, we had some choices. Who do you call? You're up against a wall. You're up against time. Who are you going to call? 1-800-LIGHT-ROLL. No. <laughs> Technical service. They are a great resource. And what do I say when you talk to, to tech service? Don't be embarrassed and be prepared for the phone call. It's OK. Because they might think of something that you were, oh, yeah, oh, I forgot that. Simple stuff. It can be very, very simple. And don't, don't be embarrassed and go, I should have known that. It's OK. Again, tech service is happy that you're squared away in time for your show and they get to move on and get another couple of coffee. I mean, take another phone call. <laughs> so far, so good. So now we've talked about tech service. There are all other people, too. Do you have a relationship with your ETC dealer? Do they have a service arm that's helpful? If they don't, 1 800 light troll. <laughs> um, so those are resources as well. You know, the service centers. It's great to have a relationship with a service center. I say this all the time. Invite them in, in a non-emergency mode. Come on over, I'll buy you a cup of coffee, we'll walk through the system. That way their eyes on, you get a sense of who they are and their abilities to help you in a pinch. And then you can call them and they won't go, who is this? Did we ever talk before? What? Where is this place? So have that relationship, build a relationship. And that guy may move someday and he might become an ME at another space and then you'll know a guy at an ME with similar equipment and you guys can talk. I mean, we, we all post, we all chat. Yeah, have those discussions. Build, build the relationships with these people. Um, manufacturers, uh, ETC, obviously foremost. If you have other equipment, sure. Maybe you want to talk to tech service in one of those other manufacturers event groups and say, hey, this is who I am. This is what I got. You know, is there software upgrades we should be doing? Are there firmware changes we should be making? Is there something on the horizon I should be aware of on my other equipment? Have those discussions. Be, be, be a person in their eyes. Make them know you. Because when you call in a pinch, they're more likely to be able to help you or more likely more willing to help you. Have the relationship. Friends. We talked about, so now you have a guy at a field service center and now he moves on, but you're still acquaintances. You're still friends. You still chat because he's a decent guy and you're, you're a decent person, so you guys, you guys chat. So he's a resource, too. He'll go, yeah, I worked on that problem just like that 37 years ago, and the answer is, and it gives you another resource, another resource. We were talking at breakfast this morning, a couple of the uh, guys were well, right here, um, <laughs> and we were saying it's not what any one of us knows. It's because I can call John and go, oh, shit, John, <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> And conversely, John can field a phone call or someone in his team can field a phone call for non-ETC equipment and they'll go, yeah, but you know who you should call is? 1-800-LITRO. Uh, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, that was very good. Yeah. Was, I, I like your shirt, by the way, oh, too. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Some very stylish gentleman gave it to me. You're, you're, you're just wearing that, man, I'm telling you. That's great, that's great. So, 
And, and one thing I'll add is in this modern, wonderful day and age, what is probably the strongest tool you have? Your phone mm -hmm. and your brain. Right over there, yep. So you start here, you breathe, you don't panic, you think, and then you have your phone. Because after hours, I mean, we have an after hours line, 24 seven, 15 minute call back, best in the world. Um, the gold not, standard. Not that I'm biased, but not everyone does. So what are your resources in that moment if it's not us? Use the you can use the internet. Because most people have at least manuals online. Some people have forums, you can, Use the internet, use your friends on the internet as a resource. I mean, there's like this background group of COBOL programmers in the US, and they all know each other. And so they use the forum, they just, they text each other. And if I might, what's, what's the group? Uh, is it Control Booth? Control Booth, a, a good, another good resource. Yeah. Another good resource. At, there's some noise there's some, in the background, but, but, there's, but there is some good information if you can sit through it. That was almost a spit take. <laughs> What's next? So long ago. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. We, t we live by story. Movie stuff. I'm going to be here a while. <laughs> Come on. Um, I went, I, I came out of grad school at UW-Madison. I was going to be the next great lighting designer ever in the history of ever and do the regional circuit. And everyone would know me and palms would be laid at my feet as I came into a town. And I got to the end of my graduate career and said, oh, this is evil, I'm done. <laughs> and so a dear friend of mine, Sarah Clausen, who is a product manager for The Hog, uh, said, there's this, this service thing that I think would work well for you. And so I went to work for a dealer and my very first service call, I went to a, a dinner theater between here and Milwaukee and Fireside, for those of you who are local. And the dimmer rack was flickering. And long story, very long and painful story, I had this whole tool case of tools I didn't know how to use. And I get there and the phone tech was like, well, do you know, do you have a scope? I'm like, yeah. Like, okay, well look at DMX, how? <laughs> a day and a half later, it came down to a blown DMX chip, which the punchline is I then had to send that to the factory to get repaired because I didn't have DMX chips. So wasn't a great showing because I wasn't being methodical. But we believe, Steve and I, that you don't need to know the piece of gear that you're working on to troubleshoot it. And in that vein, we have brought in a piece of equipment that we can guarantee nobody in the room knows because it has heretofore not existed. May I? Oh, yes, please. Today heralds a new day in corporate cooperation. Yeah. ETC and Lytrol are proud to announce our first joint product. Now, <laughs> I, I just wanted to say that you'll never see this with ETC. This is Lytrol talking. Just, just saying, just saying. So you have seen the ubiquitous and ever handy mini mag light. Yes? Yeah. We all recognize the mag light. And some of you might even be familiar with the Persuader version of the mag light. Stay tuned. <laughs> he wouldn't let me use the other name. I don't know. I don't know. But <laughs> anyway. Anyway. But today. Hold on. Oh. This is the live action part. We need three volunteers. Oh, yeah. Saw you. Saw you. Saw you. Come on up. Come on down. Oh, and there's no swag. And there's no flag in the floor. No yep. Okay, come on down. Come on down. All right. So you can step to the side so the camera can get the live unveiling. Okay. Are you ready? The megalomaniac. <laughs> <laughs> and we are one. <laughs> Thank you, Vanna. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's pretty. It's hmm. a fine piece but, of work, Steve. But we're having a little difficulty with it. So the, the, the production electrician has called you in because the show's in 15 minutes, and we need this. This, this, is, is, our, this is our lighting system. 
It's got no. Well, it's got it's got control. It has a power supply. It has a a, a lumen source in it. It's got all the pieces to the puzzle. Uh, but uh, curtains and a few minutes, we better move this along. So back here, we have some tools you might need. A paintbrush. We have a hammer. <laughs> we have a meter. Just not a hammer. A pry we have a pry bar. A couple other things. So, <laughs> go. John and I promise you several things. Okay. The lumen emitter works. Okay, the lamp works. And there's some batteries that actually work. Are they in there? I, I said there's some <laughs> batteries that actually work. <laughs> <laughs> and and turn so you can face the camera. <laughs> and here is the probable wiring diagram. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, it gets better. Okay. And okay. my daughter, my 13, my 14-year-old daughter, she's got a thing for nail polish, and I grab some clear nail polish from her. I'll see you guys. All right, good see luck. See you later. Okay. <laughs> In the State Street, let's go. <laughs> there are six things wrong with the light. Six. While they're working, I uh, just want to point out that the ETCP sign up is here in case blah, 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 because they're actually giving us half a credit for this course. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> so that, that's up here. Um, the other thing I wanted to say was at the back, they're going to have uh, these handout palm cards for you. These are business size cards with my contribution that says, Thank you. Thank you. That was my contribution. And then text suitable for 14 year olds on the background. Exactly, exactly. Get your cheaters on for that text. Feel free to shout out suggestions. Oh, look at, man, they're on fire. They're on fire. They got the strippers out already. All right. Man. No, no, now wait a minute. You didn't volunteer. I did. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, a little slow on the uptake. And it, we accept all volunteers. <laughs> so you can call your friends if you need a exactly. hand. Exactly. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Phone a friend. Is this don't, familiar? don't look for the manual online. <laughs> <laughs> and I must say, I don't think I've ever seen so many stagehands volunteer to come to the front of the room. So, <laughs> well done. Question. Would you repeat the question? So the question was, has ET, is ETC looking into using something like FaceTime or a real-time app? What I can tell you, uh, the design track's going to hear this a lot this weekend, but ETC is always looking at new and exciting opportunities. <laughs> I promise you. Uh, so at the end of this, that, Matt's right? going to speak about KMS for a couple minutes, which is our knowledge management system. So as a first step, we do have a really, really vibrant web resource that is growing every day. And we, have, we literally have people authoring articles every day to go into that as we get phone calls, as we have new things. Um, I know that we are very aware of those opportunities. We just have not gotten to integrating stuff yet. So, good question. Are there other questions? Well, our volunteers toil away. I got shooed away. <laughs> well, since they don't want us. <laughs> are there any scenarios you would like to play Stump the Chumps with? <laughs> sure. I have a strand rack and a... Does that make you stranded? <laughs> he has a strand rack, uh, see? Yeah. Sorry, sorry. I promise I wouldn't do that all weekend. I'm a... It's a it's, it's, it's... supervisor. Yes, and, sure. Uh, Console, yeah. And at 30%, my catwalk flickers. Yes. So strand console. No. I'm sorry, strand dimmers. Element console? Element console. Element console. Element console. And at 30%, the catwalk flickers. I have a couple of OODA loop questions for you. And that is, the catwalk lights, are they LEDs? Some are, but they don't flicker. <laughs> Not the answer I expected. <laughs> Never assume. And so this is an original strand supervisor rack. Not original. I think it's the 
second series. The gray one is not the black one. Understood. Understood. Don't listen to this. You guys heard me say this yesterday. Don't listen to this. So there's a guy in Calgary Pascal. who makes a very nice product, which is a replacement uh, processor is that is super okay. easy to install in the base of a supervisor rack. And it updates all kinds of heartaches, like flickering lights on particular channels. Exactly. Exactly. But it's only the catwalk. Understood. 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 And I'll go a step further. Have there been any repairs to the dimmers like the one in for the catwalk? Yes. So did it get the right cube when it got its replacement? Because the wrong cube, cubes are, I'm sorry, who's familiar with cubes and dimmers? So, okay. So what that is, a typical for, this, for that one, it's a dual cube, what we call a dual cube. It's a two circuit cube and it's really four SCRs in a back, SCR, in a back-to-back -back configuration, each one does one circuit of the two, and they're available in random fire and zero cross fire. Zero cross is standard and inexpensive, so everybody buys them. They work like, they work like shit for, for <laughs> lighting control because they only turn on at the zero cross, which doesn't help us. We need to turn them on wherever we decide in the, in the sine wave. And so the wrong cube because, oh, I got that cube, and they forget the dash 10 on the end, which makes it a random fire cube. So that could be a possible scenario. Going back to the OODA loop, before you call the guy in Calgary, is I would take those two modules and swap them and see if the problem moves to, hey, how come the rail lights are flickering? Right. That would, that would be my approach. See if the problem follows the dimmer module. Yeah. And then call the guy in Calgary. <laughs> and use my name. 1-800, oh, sorry. <laughs> Other questions? Technical or otherwise? Scenarios. Go ahead. I'll try to cut this down. Um, dimmer's not working. This is dimmer number two. You know, uh, um, swap the, the modules. The problem stays with the, problem stays with the physical plug. Uh, check DMX. It, DMX is getting to the rack. The rack is, the rack takes the fire from the dimmer. The, uh, the, the, the process director says, hey, dimmer two is at full. Um, could not, like, in, in, in the end, came up. I'm going to go see, I'm going to go see how Megalo's Yeah, done. okay, have fun with that. <laughs> All right, what kind of dimmers? So, uh, white on the switch is on, right? Okay. Um, do you, so I don't know the interfaces for those as well, funny story. Uh, do they have a test mode? What happens to the dimmer in test mode? Nothing. Okay. Can you swap the control inside to a different dimmer and see if the control is working or if it's the actual cube? I don't know if I can do that. Patrick, yes. Stripper, wire nuts, good times. One, one moment. Patrick, yes. Is it, yes, it, are we getting, if you open it, is there power at the cube? Is there power coming out of the cube? Because really all that the cube does is open up a gate right. of power. So w can you open it in a very safe NFPA 70E health safety way? Because <laughs> it is electrical safety. Again, I learned field service back in the old days where we were taught horrific things. But can you take two leads and parallel them off the cube and bring them out into a little connector we call Wagos or wire nuts and tie those to the leads of your meter and power the rack up? Do you have power in? That's your first lead. And then do you see power coming off of the cube on the second lead? Okay, so then if the cube is definitely sending power out, then what's the wire between you and the rest of the universe? I'm going to jump in just for a moment. Is this a, a sensor rack? CD80. 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 Um, my recommendation, to Patrick, hang on one second. Patrick, Patrick, hang on one second. Uh, How's it going? Anyway, I'll try to give him some kudos. We have anyway, fun. so what I say to most of my clients, you know, uh, like hotel ballrooms and I'm stuff like where bar, I've got yeah. electricians who really don't understand the system and they've got a fixture that's out. I suggest that they own a constant module for whatever rack they have. I would say done the so you slide out with whatever dimmer modules in question, the one you know, for the catwalk, slide in a constant module, does it light, does it turn on? 
that then tells us everything downstream is acting as, as we anticipate. And then, then we can work our way backwards. But I was given. Long story short. Yeah. We found out that uh, the, the rack was just wired. There were two and seven were swapped. Someone misread the cable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the most time-consuming so, things I do for some of our clients is a full circuit check of their facility, inclusive check and exclusive check, and that takes a long time to do it. And that that would have yeah. that would have brought it down to that. But I wanted to give Patrick a shout out because he brought us back to the tipping point or splitting the system. So he's saying, yeah, okay, so it it doesn't work from here out. The problem you're describing is a little bit different, but the idea was. To split the system, you know, define the problem, get it down into a workable, manageable box that you can work on. Exactly, exactly. Other questions for uh, Stump the Chumps? That was a good one. Yeah. Nobody else has any technical problems of any kind they're curious about. <laughs> So, touring situation, go into a venue, bring the stuff online, everything starts flickering. So when you say bring the stuff online, is that your control system? No, it was all house gear. All house gear. The venue had been open for six months or a year. They didn't really have house crew. They sent us oh, yeah, this happens sometimes. We don't know why. <laughs> so if everyone didn't catch that, for six months, sort of, hey. Well done. Take a bow for the camera. You guys did good. Get your there cameras. You go. They're going to bow. It's going to flash this actually at the camera. As soon as it's back together. <laughs> totally as soon as it's back Whoa, together. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and no, you can't take it home. There we go. There it is. <laughs> there you go. Get yeah, down. no. <laughs> the name. There we go. All right. So, Steve, what was wrong with that light? There were six different things wrong with that. And we had some fun at their expense. And just indicating that, no, there's never manufacturing problems. That never happens. <laughs> so there was a list. Where is my list? I have a list. It's face down. Ah, yeah, there you go. The practical exam. Let's see. We did the blah, 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 blah. There was a dead battery. There was a battery with nail polish on the tip. The, one of the batteries was inserted backwards. I figured that would be a, a no-brainer. The switch, the switch here had the uh, wire screwed down on the insulation. You, saw, you guys saw that one early. Excellent meter use, uh, yeah. by the way. The switch, while it looks like white, and black for on and off is actually backwards. <laughs> and the plus and minus leads for the battery pack were backwards and the wrong color. <laughs> and you guys did great. You guys did great. Thank you for participating. All right, so Mr. Carroll would love a couple minutes to talk about KMS. So are there any final questions before we wrap up? So the facility, so troubleshooting. <laughs> so it's flickering. It's been up for six months, never really maybe worked, sometimes does, sometimes doesn't. Did you find manuals at the dean's office? Yes. And what were they for? The dimmer rack. OK, what kind of dimmer rack? It was an install rack. I honestly don't remember. Um, there was one that I remember. A mains problem. So. You know, there's, there's a lot of things. So if it's like a sensor rack, you can go to the face panel and look at the incoming signal for what is your level for that rack. So that's a really great place to walk to split the system in half. Is my signal steady? Is my output not? Then we know it's somewhere in that rack. 
And so when I, when I hear flickering at a rack, is it two sources? Is it, you know, what am I seeing? So I can go right to the rack and just say, what's my output? What does the rack think it should be doing? So in that case, I would start at the rack. And then, you know, sometimes for flickering mains, you'll see the screens flicker. That's one of those tells of not so much direct, but you'll see something going on. Um, our sensor modules have a low voltage error. So if the voltage goes below 90 volts in a standard US system, it'll throw a flag and say, hey, your voltage is not right. And mains problems are sometimes really challenging to find because they're intermittent, which are our favorite kind of problems. Um, and there, there are venues where we have to send, we have this power quality analyzer, which is basically a $9,000 meter that measures power on the main side and sees stuff coming in. So that is, we, we can go all the way out to that level, but of a simple RMS meter, I, I carry the littlest fluke ever because I'm a manager and they don't trust me with real tools. Um, but a simple RMS meter, you can do that and see if it's flickering at the outlet. And if it's flickering at the outlet is, you know, you wire a lead out of the rack very safely and tie it to your leads, are you seeing the flickering there? If you see it there, you move upstream, you tag onto the mains, do you see it there? So even with a very simple tool set, you can work your way through problems and safely because you can get wires out through. <laughs> Stuck dimmers? <laughs> I'm not saying yes, but <laughs> maybe. Um, so, so yeah, so mains are fun. All right. What phase is the CEM fed off of? It is fed off of phase A. So that's a good question. We've had cases where entire parts of the rack go away because we lost phase C. But the rack still says it's working, but you'll get an error because the CEM looks at all the phases. Voltage low, phase C. Really low. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. But yeah. That's exactly right. Um, Matt doesn't want to talk to you for a moment, but before he comes up, these are the uh, palm cards. We've there are folks in the back that are going to hand them out, so yep. just grab one on the way See out the door. On the way out, you're, you're welcome to these. Uh, and again, you know what my contribution on these cards was. So, very good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It's been a great morning. Yeah. My plug is right there. Troubleshooting competition, I would put, my, put them up and, and we'd win. Uh, I don't know what, what that competition looks like, but, uh, but, but uh, I think it would be fascinating to see. So, uh, that being said, sometimes you don't want to call, sometimes you're in the middle of something and you need to look things up on your own, and ETC didn't have the best self-service uh, options that, it, that existed. And so we said, let's do something about that. So... <laughs> Port.etcconnect.com is a thing that exists. Is a thing that exists. It looks like this, uh, and I'm very excited to announce that we just Monday morning went live with the high-end side of things. So uh, this is the first uh, the big announcement uh, that the high-end side uh, exists as well. So what we've done is we've taken all the support 
information that existed on etcconnect.com, and we put it somewhere that you can actually get access to it, and it's right there. Uh, it's not hiding legacy information, it's just the stuff you're actually looking for half the time. Uh, it's all right there at your fingertips, and search works. <laughs> so, I want to know about Windows 7 upgrades. Why not? <laughs> Everybody does sound. Uh, so, uh, so, so just that fast. I wonder if I can get a hat trick of microphones uh, in 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 four minutes. Uh, so, just that fast, we're getting results. Uh, you know, we're getting content. Uh, if I actually click on it, even then it loads. Uh, so here we go, uh, you know, what, what is going on, what is eligible, what is not eligible, uh, you know, d just like that. So we're able to get information out, get it in your hands, and get it quickly. It works on your phone, it works on your computer, it works with it for whatever you might be looking for. Uh, so, uh, I just kind of wanted to talk about it. It's going to be, they're going to chat about it a little bit more uh, later on. You know, you can... Uh, Go home, Steve Short. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> I would never do that. Uh, so, uh, but like I was saying, information exists for high end as well. Uh, there's a lot of information there. If you don't like to search, if you do like to drill down, uh, options are there. You can get in. Uh, this is information that is getting loaded, happening on a regular, regular basis. Uh, I've challenged my team to when, uh, when a problem is presented to you, uh, does it exist already? Uh, you know, do we have it in the knowledge base already? Uh, you know, you can see what's most popular. If you want to, you can come and just take a look through the, the directory O articles. Uh, and this is just EOS programming right here. So, uh, you know, so uh, this is the, one of the first places that my team's going. And if the problem doesn't exist here, then we're solving a problem and we're writing it up. So uh, it's a growing thing that's happening every day. Uh, and people are going to chat a little bit more about it later. I don't need to spend forever on it. Uh, I think the, one, of the, one of the best things that's happening, though, is we can talk about High-end systems has joined uh, the, the KMS, the knowledge management system. Uh, there's a lot of information that they're putting in on a regular basis as well. So if anybody has high-end equipment, anything you're looking for down those lines, uh, it's really exciting uh, to have them here as well. So it's just a great resource. Uh, it's a use resource we use internally, uh, and I want to make sure that you guys have access to it and know about it at the same time. So, uh, da, 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 do. Uh, that being said, I did not have any more dreams last night. I thought about making one up, but uh, I, I know I let you guys down. I can't believe we're at the, uh, on the last day of this conference already. I do want to say thank you so much for, uh, for being a great group of people, uh, for being uh, excited to be here and excited to learn and try, try new things. Uh, I'd encourage you here on your last day, you know, make a new friend, sit, somebody, uh, sit by somebody you, you don't know, uh, and, and learn about somebody else's experience just a little bit. Um, you know, I want to echo some of the things that John and Steve were talking about. You know, when you call in, if you need help, you know, we're here to help you. Uh, absolutely, you know, but, uh, you know, stay calm. You know, what's happened? Sometimes we're going to ask you to go through things that you've already done, uh, you know, and, and bear with us. Uh, you know, don't be jerks, uh, that kind of thing. Those people work really hard uh, on, a, on a regular basis. You know, they're, they're taking 200 plus calls a day uh, to, to try and help people. So uh, it's hard to jump from problem to problem to problem. So give people a second, let them get caught up, uh, let them find out what's happening uh, so they can help you. Because uh, that's really what the goal is at the end of the day. Does everybody still have their schedules? Do they want to know where they're going next? Uh, or or do you guys re remember those? So the pirates are going to be going to so many components. I didn't write down the rooms these are in because I'm not good at this. Uh, G. Um, the ninjas will be uh, with John again. With, uh, it worked until I dot, dot, dot in J. Uh, and the Vikings will be in the other room. Uh, 
<laughs> so I learned I love the mover. Uh, like I said, thank you guys so much. Enjoy your last day here. Uh, make sure you grab those cards that, uh, that Steve uh, and John put together on your way out uh, and uh, travel safely. <laughs>